Denmark banned ashwagandha. Yeah, a whole country looked at the research and decided, nope, too dangerous. Meanwhile, if you scroll TikTok for five minutes, you'll see people swearing it's the cure for depression, anxiety, stress, basically everything. So how can one nation outlaw it while millions of people worldwide are buying it by the bottle? What did Denmark see that influencers aren't telling you? And here's a twist. I understand why people believe the hype. Because when you're struggling, when meds are feel overwhelming, when therapy hasn't clicked yet, hope feels like medicine. I've seen patients cling to that hope. I've even wanted it myself at times. But is this plant really hope, or is it just another trap? And who am I to pull the roots out of these miracle claims? My name is Dr. Salman Aziz Mirza, triple board certified in adult psychiatry, child and adolescent psychiatry, and addiction medicine, and I'd rather show you the science than sell you snake oil. If you've spent even five minutes on TikTok, you've seen it. Ashwagandha is everywhere. Hyped as the miracle cure for anxiety, depression, stress, you name it. And these aren't tiny accounts. These are creators with hundreds of thousands, even millions of followers saying things like, I stopped my meds after two weeks. This worked better than antidepressants. It cured my anxiety disorder completely. Now, think about that for a second. You're anxious, depressed, desperate for relief, and you hear someone your age on your feed swearing a $20 supplement fixed their life. What do you do? You start thinking, maybe this is it. Maybe this is the answer I've been missing. And here's where it gets tricky. Those testimonials, they spread faster than any science ever could. One TikTok can rack up millions of views in a single weekend. Meanwhile, the peer-reviewed study behind it a few thousand reads, if it even exists. And the influencers, a lot of them aren't just sharing the story, they're making money every single time you click their link in bio. Sometimes it's straight up sponsored content, dressed up as a heartfelt confession. That's why the hype feels so real. It's not just claims, it's emotion. Stories about panic attacks disappearing, stories about someone who was suicidal and now says that they're saved. But here's the dangerous part, People aren't just liking those videos, they're acting on them. I've seen comment sections where strangers will ask, how much should I take? And the answer is <sighs> horrifying. People are just stopping the prescriptions cold turkey. Others are mixing ashwagandha with meds that they barely understand. So yeah, the hype is powerful. But let me ask you this, if these claims are true, why do the scientists who actually run the studies keep warning us not to overhype them? What are the influencers leaving out? That's where we head next. So let's pull back the curtain. What does the research actually say about ashwagandha? First of all, let's take a quick step back. Ashwagandha is a small shrub from Ayurvedic medicine, used for thousands of years as a tonic for stress, energy, and vitality. You hear it called things like an adaptogen. Sounds scientific, right? Like it magically helps your body adapt to stress. But here's the truth. Adaptogen isn't a medical category. It's a buzzword. It makes herbs sound like medicine, but in reality, it's marketing dressed up in lab coats. Now, onto the studies. Yes, some randomized trials and meta-analyses do show modest benefits. People report feeling a little less stressed. Cortisol levels dip slightly. Maybe they fall asleep 17 minutes faster. 17 minutes, not seven hours, not life-changing, 17. But here's the problem. These studies are tiny. We're talking 50 to 100 people, six to 12 weeks long, different doses, different extracts, different groups, often stressed out college students, not people battling clinical depression or severe anxiety. And that matters because feeling calmer before an exam that's not the same thing as treating a major psychiatric condition. Meta-analyses confirm this too. Small, short-term improvements, but nothing like the dramatic transformations you see on social media. So here's the irony. The scientists who run these studies, they're cautious. They warn against overhyping their findings. But those warnings? They never make it into the TikTok captions. And it's not just about stress or anxiety. 
ashwagandha gets marketed as everything. A testosterone booster, a natural Viagra, a muscle builder, even a longevity tonic. Basically, if you have a problem, there's an influencer promising that ashwagandha can fix it. Bigger biceps, stronger erections, living longer, there's a reel for that. But the reality is always the same. Small studies, short-term results, contradictory evidence. The marketing is sprinting miles ahead of the science. So yes, mild short-term effects on stress and sleep, sure. But a miracle cure for depression and anxiety, not even close. And we haven't even touched the part almost nobody talks about, the risks. Here's where things get serious. Because while influencers are out here selling hope, real people are ending up in hospital beds. Case reports have linked ashwagandha to acute liver injury. We're talking jaundice, skin and eyes turning yellow, hepatitis so severe that patients needed hospitalization. And the doses? 450 to 1350 milligrams in a day. The exact same amounts being recommended in TikTok comment sections. But it doesn't stop at the liver. Ashwagandha can crank up thyroid hormone production. If you already have low thyroid, maybe that sounds helpful. But if you don't, suddenly your metabolism, your mood, your heart rate, all thrown into chaos. Racing heartbeat, anxiety spikes, even dangerous arrhythmias. And pregnancy? Well, that's another major red flag. Some experts warn against it outright because of the miscarriage risk. Yet, wellness influencers still post videos calling it safe and natural. Safe for who exactly? And then come the drug interactions. Ashwagandha can amplify medications for thyroid, diabetes, blood pressure, sedatives, even immunosuppressants. That means blood sugar crashing too low, blood pressure plummeting to the point of fainting, extreme drowsiness that becomes a medical emergency. This isn't just inconvenient, it's life-threatening. And here's the part most people never realize. Supplements aren't regulated like medications. Independent testing has found bottles with way more active compounds than the label claims. Others with way less. Some even contaminated. So when you buy a bottle, you're not just swallowing a capsule, you're rolling the dice. This is exactly why Denmark banned it. They saw the risks, hormone disruption, liver damage, safety concerns. They decided the dangers outweighed the benefits. Meanwhile, US regulators, well, we're still reviewing things. <laughs> so while influencers call it a miracle cure, the truth is darker. The same capsules being sold as wellness are the same ones sending people to the ER. And that raises the bigger question. Why do we keep falling for natural cure myths, even when the evidence screams otherwise? So here's the real twist. If the science is weak and the risks are this serious, why do we still fall for it? Because our brains are wired for it. We hear the word natural and automatically think safe. But poison ivy is natural and so is cyanide. And when it comes to mental health, the pull is even stronger. Therapy can feel slow. Meds can feel overwhelming. Stigma, side effects, frustration, it all makes us crave an alternative. So when a plant gets hyped as the perfect cure, it feels like destiny. But what's really happening is something that I call the hope loop. And once you see it, you'll notice it everywhere. Here's how it works. You see a glowing TikTok testimonial. Someone says their panic attacks finished, their depression is cured. Then you order a bottle. You start taking it. And a week later, you feel a little calmer. Maybe it's a placebo effect. Maybe it's just a good week, but your brain wants it to work. That's called confirmation bias. You grab onto the good days and you ignore the bad ones. Now you're convinced. So every new video you watch feels like proof. The algorithm floods your feed with even more success stories while the negative ones vanish. And suddenly you're trapped. It doesn't matter if the science disagrees. It doesn't matter if someone warns you about risks. The loop feeds itself. Every miracle cure post reinforces your belief, while influencers and supplement companies cash in. That's the hope loop. It feels like empowerment, 
but really it's manipulation of your psychology, your wallet, and your health. And here's the scary part. Ashwagandha is just one chapter. The Hope Loop is being used right now to sell you dozens of other miracle supplements, from mushrooms to powders to pills, which is why exposing the loop matters. Because if you can spot it here, you'll see it the next time someone tries to sell you a cure-all. So here's the bottom line. Ashwagandha might take the edge off stress. Maybe it helps you sleep for 17 minutes longer. But a miracle cure? Not even close. The risks, liver damage, thyroid disruption, miscarriage, dangerous drug interactions are real. Denmark saw it. Scientists warn us about it. The only ones still shouting miracle are influencers with affiliate links. So here's your 24 hour action step. If you've been thinking about trying ashwagandha, hit pause. Talk to your doctor, your psychiatrist, your pharmacist before swapping real treatment for something that you saw on TikTok. And remember the hope loop, because this isn't just about one plant. This is a psychological trap that keeps us chasing the next miracle, while companies cash in and we're left holding the bag. And ashwagandha, it's just the beginning. Next up, lion's mane. The mushroom influencers swear can boost memory, sharpen focus, even protect against Alzheimer's. Sounds amazing, right? But does the science actually back it up? Or is it just another hope loop? That's coming next. So if you don't want to miss it, make sure you hit subscribe. Because once you see this pattern, you'll never look at natural cures the same way again. Until next time, be safe and be well.